What's going on, everyone? Real Tuners Radio, episode 58, is coming at you right now. Tonight, we have special guest Garrett Mitchell, also known as Cletus McFarlane, automotive YouTube sensation, fresh off of breaking through the seven-second barrier in his six-speed manual transmission Corvette. He's going to talk to us about the trials and tribulations leading up to this milestone for him and his team. Also, we have our usual panel of hosts tonight, John Buley from Little John's Motorsport Solutions, Tom Sewell, Fuel Injector Development, James Short from Shore Tuning, we got Mark Dahlquist from Throttles Performance, Bill Fowler of Bear Brakes, Scott Evans from Helix Tuning, Cody Bruce and Mo Lonis from Nano Nitrous, Chad Reynolds from Bangshift.com, we got Dan Parker, the world's fastest blind man, and then you got this guy, Ry Clem from Bull City Speed. And finally, Dr. Green Thumb himself, the hydroponic tuner, Scott Clark. Uh, we need to change it to so it's not Wednesdays, so that apparently that's when Rye has to put his kids to bed, babysit. He's got to be quiet when he does his intros. Welcome to Real Tuners. And he's got to make fun of my garden. The record, I'm not hating. Uh, I have mad props for you. Anybody rowing sevens is it's impressive in my book. Thank so. you, man. Thank you, man. You guys are that. live. We're bringing them in from the green room. It sounds like Garrett made it on board. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Nice to meet <laughs> you for happened? the first time. I didn't even get a chance to talk to Garrett and say nothing before this. Literally the first time we've ever met in person. Yeah, man. Nice meeting you. Yeah, welcome aboard. Well, obviously... Uh, we follow your YouTube channel like crazy, and it's kind of funny because it started off as something that looked like you were doing just for fun, and now seriously competitive passes that you're making. Um, I, I'll back yeah. off. I let me let Ry just kind of talk. He's the much better interviewer. We all got a ton of questions. We'll get to him, and we won't, we won't burn your time up or anything. But uh, everybody else, no, you're welcome good. You're good. Yeah, Rye, just want to know how many bald eagles you had on the tune. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah, every single one of them. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, so you know, before we get into, I think the internet is, you know, you have single-handedly divided the automotive culture on social media with these, uh, <laughs> this, this record pass here. Um, but before we get down to the details of that, just, you know, give us the, the two-minute background. Like, how did you get into racing and how did you end up in the position that you are today? Okay. So um, I worked for 1320 Video. You guys have probably all heard of that streetcar video production company. Yep. Um, always loved driving cars. And last year or two years ago, I decided to start my own YouTube channel and Kyle, the owner, helped me. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I was in school. I didn't have a bunch of money to, to try and buy a cool project car. But uh, we kind of just decided a stripped down vet would be the cool thing. And I, I found one on eBay for 5000 bucks. And that's how I bought Leroy, the car you guys always see. It was wrecked in the rear. A guy had hit a pole with it. And so the guy who actually had bought it and sold it to me had already pulled all the parts off of it. It was at like a Corvette parts farm type deal. So it was just a chassis with an engine. And uh, we were like, well, cool. So we started doing a bunch of burnouts with it. Um, you know, people loved it on YouTube, which was all I was after at the time. You know, just trying to grow my YouTube channel. Right. And... Uh, then we got in touch with Texas Speed, and we're like, "Hey, let's let's try and make this thing a little bit quick because it it went like eleven ninety nine bone stock." <clears throat> and uh, they were like, "Well, if you want, you know, a cam and some head stuff, we'll, we'll hook you up." And you know, we decided let's do an LSA. So we did the LSA, went nine ninety eight on that, and that was like the craziest thing to me because I had never ran a nine in my life, and uh, you know, it was perfect seat time. I got to do a bunch of passes with it like that. Learned how to drive it. And, you know, I wasn't a drag racer at all. I, I had absolutely no experience in drag racing. I rode course, you know, my whole life when I was younger. So drag racing was definitely new to me, but I, I picked it up quick. And at that point, we wanted to go turbo because we were going to have this, this race challenge with the owner of 1320 C5. So we put two Precision 64, 66s on it. Um, I took the car to a local shop to me in Tampa. Sorry about the background noise. Harley guys drive by me. No, you're good. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> they they ha it's, it's a Harley. On. They have uh, to rev it. Yeah, they got to make sure it's on. Yep. <laughs> so I took the car up to Profab Performance, 
and I was like, hey guys, like, you know, they, they never met me, but we were all locals and knew each other, but I was like, this is, sounds ridiculous, but I want these turbos to blind me. I was like, I want this to be the craziest looking car of all time, you know, and they're like, okay, you know, we'll do what you want to do. Fab and guy loves you okay. right there. <laughs> yeah, there's no restrictions. Yeah. You can put them anywhere. I, I literally, I said, I was like, blind me. I was like, make this the craziest looking turbo setup you've ever done. And they did it. And I went to pick the thing up and it was nighttime. And I was like, oh man, I was like, what have I done? <laughs> Couldn't see anything. I was trying to pull the trailer. I was like, oh my God. So we had stock computer. I thought I was hot shit running the stock computer. You know, I was like, oh, I got a stock computer. I'm the coolest guy on the block. And it just never worked. You know, like. The throttle body would slam shut over 10 pounds of boost, never made any power. It was a disaster, and I fought with the car for months. And then I went to uh, LS Fest, and the car kept shutting down at the eighth mile because it would, it would shut the throttle body, and I was so pissed. And that's when we got set up with Holly, and we put a Dominator in the car. It took like a month or two. And that's, like, that's kind of the breaking point when everything changed. Not even a month after that, I ran my first eight which put us at the C5 record. I went 890 at like 159. And I was ahead of... Uh, and, and how long ago yeah. was that? That was October 29th when I did my 890. 2000, so that, was, that was crazy. Less than a year ago. Last year. Yeah. 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 So in less that than a year, like, you... That's... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, no, you're good. So we did the 890 and like that was, that was mind-boggling. I never thought the car was C8. And I remember tune in the car because it's, it's a holly i mean it's a game boy and i went to holly school and so it you, as you guys know it's not hard to tune a holly so i started picking up on the tuning stuff um i remember putting like 15 pounds of boost in it and i was like either this thing's blowing up or i'm going to eight you know <laughs> and i i went 890 and i couldn't believe it and then i just started talking to texas speed they're like guys that's you know that's nothing so we were like not even two weeks later we were like well let's try and We'll try and get this Corvette world record, which was 863 at the time, which was Josh Tonsky's car or from his shop, the, the Silver Vet. Right. And so uh, we went to the track with Kevin Smith, you know, because I had met him when I got the Holly, and he taught me a lot of a lot about the Holly. Kevin knows the Holly and upside he down. And, yes, go ahead. <laughs> right. He, he's really good with it. So he. It's a good thing. Know, Don't talk shit about him because he's it's actually different. on here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah no, he's, right. he's texting me. <laughs> Trust me, he's the first Say nice called me after the seven. He's he's my boy, you know. I, yeah. I was just at the track with him not even two weeks ago, you know, trying to run the eight. I went 823, but so he comes to the track with me. We end up going 848, and this is with a synchronized transmission. This is right after my 890. We're like, man, we're on, you know, we're on top right now. We're we're ahead of everybody. So then, uh, then Josh goes 822, and I had some clutch issues. Ended up getting a Monster LP1 um, RR Triple in January, and I, you know, I started messing around. We did the half mile. We road raced at Daytona. We road raced Sebring. Uh, went to Vegas. That's what I'm talking about. So you actually burnout. had went to Hoon again. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but you yeah, actually had ahead. a driver's background. <laughs> it really that's what Kevin told me that when I, when I taught a class at his shop. He's like, no, dude, this guy can drive awesome. He can feel what's going on. Perfect for the for the for the stick shift application i don't i don't want to slow you down but yeah i, I think we should talk about, about the fact that you ran three passes with that combo within the same hundredth number four four, four passes four. what yeah. in the actual f yeah. is i mean they're two <laughs> explain yeah, was, how does so, that done so after the after the 48 like i said we we screwed around for a while like went all over the country did so many events and this is all in the same exact engine that texas speed originally gave me and to give some credit there i mean you're talking i put this thing on a dyno and had the you know the fuel table set in the e85 and i was tuning the thing on gasoline like leaning the damn thing out on the dyno like i've made so many mistakes along the way and uh you know so much jacking around but the car survived and we made it to charlotte and i was like all right i'm turning this thing out i put it on like 21 pounds i couldn't you know i was and this is all, you know, my tuning, like doing the boost control stuff, because that's so, that's so easy. And it had a base map in it that was pretty much impeccable. And timing was 
super soft. If I told you guys the timing, you'd probably all have a heart attack. No, no, believe but, it or not, uh, you're among friends on so the go, go easy on timing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we go out there and it goes 826. I'm like, wow. So I put some more power in it and uh, it goes 826 again. And the track is going away as I'm putting more power in it because it's streetcar takeover. You know, there's street tires out there. So it goes 826 again. I'm like, all right, well, we'll just leave it in there because I feel like the tune can go faster. It goes 826 again. I'm like, man, this, this is almost frustrating. And so we had just been at the wind tunnel the weekend before, and I was like, you know, we found out it was limited, the car is. Then it goes 826 again, and I'm like, man, this has got to be the arrow making a play here. You know, this, the car is stuck. Hitting a brick wall. Right at the below 170s. Yeah, because, I mean, the drag coefficient on the car is like point six or point seven um it takes about seven or six hundred horsepower just to fight off the arrow at 170 miles an hour for that car so i want to make sure people understand that did the, and did you go to a2 is i didn't get to watch the whole video yet yeah what, yeah i went to a2 oh yeah see i've worked with a five or six land speed guys that have spent a lot of time there now that place is amazing mm-hmm. uh and the stuff yeah, you learn so there cool. is ridiculous but but explain that again explain yeah. the horsepower it's costing you so, with your arrow so basically, if Leroy was 600 horsepower, they just he's just playing out 600 wheel to the tire, he would be aerodynamically limited at 170 miles an hour. Like there you go. It, that's how much horsepower. So if I'm making 1,200, 600 of it is out of the picture. That's that's in the arrow alone. So that was the. It was kind of heartbreaking, but at the same time, we're like, man, the spirit of this car is the no body. That's that's the Did- reason it's so successful. Did they give you something like a car to compare that to? Like, what is yeah so something comparable? The, end of the video we had a, a bone stock P5 V06 in the the wind tunnel with us. We brought it there. Jeff from Heinz Racing drove his out. We put it in, and the drag coefficient was like point two nine, yeah, point three zero. So you're talking mid two hundreds on horsepower there. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're you're and, you're costing yourself you three hundred, three hundred fifty, maybe four hundred horsepower uh, at the speeds you're yeah. trapping at. Exactly. Yep. And uh, so that was like, you know, and we put cardboard all over it trying to make it better and nothing made big improvements because it's the air behind the car. That's the big issue. Right. And to fix that, you really, you really you need a body. Yeah. But just, there's no way around it. And it's like, we talked about it. We were like, well, let's get a body. And the whole spirit of the YouTube build was to just do it how Leroy is. You know, that's, that's how this car is. That's how I want him to be. And so I, I, talk to tech speed they're like turn it up they're like send it you know throw it on 25 pounds and see what happens so i went out and ran that and i want to throw this in there i'm on manifold pressure for my boost control i put co2 on the car and tried to get it to work but it wasn't working no kidding so um so it wasn't working and when kevin and i were at the track we did at 823 and we had the duty cycle in second third and fourth gear at 100 percent on the boost controller so i'm like damn you know, there's there's no going faster than this right now. And we had we put like this is where you guys are gonna have a heart attack. We we had like fourteen degrees, that's it. No. Um I no. had always ran it on like twelve or thirteen and everybody yeah. gives me shit about it, but I that's why it stayed for three hundred passes, you know. And, and you're yeah. on together. you run E ninety eight fuel on it, right? E ninety. E ninety ninety ninety, yeah, yeah. So what are your inlet yeah, air temps getting so, to? Um well when I had the sheer fab intake on, it started about 85 mm-hmm. and rise to, you know, a really low 100 or a high 90. Huh. And then when I put the Iceman on, which is the Frankenstein intake, um, the mass air temp has stopped working. So we don't have any air temp data, but I can tell you, like, even on the lower boost settings, I can feel a difference in the car. It, it's hands down faster. I mean, I went eight, five in my video last night on 11 pounds of boost. Right. Like it, whatever it is, it's working. I, I don't know. I no, don't no, no, no. I, I'll tell you, data. we did a thing at one of our classes, two of our classes where we tested inlet air temps and played with intercoolers. And we found in your power range there in the thousand to 1200 to 1300 wheel horsepower type of range, um, one degree yeah. Fahrenheit was worth one and a half to two wheel horsepower. In two separate tests. Oh God, yeah. yeah, so that's what you're feeling. But but carry on. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a bigger core for sure. So we go to 823, and I'm like, damn, we're limited on the boost controller. So I get back to the shop, and I had remembered this trick. Because actually, when I was in Charlotte, I was running a super low duty cycle on the boost controller. Well, 
what had happened is when I tried to switch the car to CO2, I took the, uh, you know, I had to reroute the vacuum. And I had forgot to put a plug in the bottom of the wastegate on one side. So if you think about it, you know, there's less of vacuum on the bottom of that wastegate. So basically, the boost I was demanding out of the boost, the, the SP value worked a lot easier. There wasn't as much of an equalization, I guess you could say, on the bottom of the gate to hold it open. So it made a lot more boost on one side. And I didn't know what was happening. I just bent it and kept racing. But I was like, man, we're at 100% on this duty cycle. What if I just pulled both plugs, you know, a plug on each side, on each gate off to create a leak on the bottom of the gate? So when I got to the track that night, I was like, well, I better try this out. I was at 55% on the duty cycle on manifold pressure, and it made like 26 pounds. So you're basically like, letting damn. the you're just letting the back pressure open the wastegate instead of the the boost to the bottom. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep, exactly. And <laughs> I, you know, I was like, screw it. I made a mistake, and I learned that trick, and it worked. And so that night, I went eight ten, but I blew the head gasket out the side of it. Like I pulled down to the end of the track when I heated it off. Water started pouring out. I was like, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. So close. In a big way. That was impressive. <laughs> I was, yeah, you know, and, and I was just so, I was a little scared because I was like, man, I could add water under my tires, but I figured because the motor had so many passes, you know, I mean, it's literally 300, that motor's never been out of the car. I was like, maybe these head gaskets were just tired. So I called Texas Speed and I was like, listen guys, we want to get this record. Let's do it now. Like we got to do it now. So they said they could overnight me something to have it Tuesday. And I was like, what if, what if you guys fly in? And, uh, they were like, let's do it. So Casey ran, so you guys probably know, and, and Trevor from Tech Speed flew in with some gaskets. Um, I pulled the heads that Sunday. You know, I couldn't really sleep after running an 810 anyway, so I pulled the <laughs> heads. We got them milled at uh, Fast Forward Race Engine, put the gaskets on Monday, thrashed all day to put that thing back together because it's a pain to put Leroy together because the way the manifolds and the intake and all that, it's so much junk up there. <laughs> got it back together, went to the track, and uh, – we were ready to send it. So we get out there and car runs fine. First pass goes eight, five and 11 pounds. We had a little boost leak issue, boost controller issue, I guess. And, uh, Casey's like, all right, we'll put, put the power back in it. He's like, put it on what you had it when you ran the eight ten. And I thought I had it kind of along the right setting, but I put too much power down. I, I put like 29 or 28 pounds. in. I think it was 28 and a half. So I, I make the pass and, uh, toss the car into fourth gear and it's just it's on a rip i knew it was the fastest pass of my life and uh tires you know the the engine goes you know revs to the sky in fourth gear and i'm like oh shit you know my clutch i was like i knew it this clutch has you know probably 100 passes on it i'm like this that was the clutch so pull back around i'm like damn it i'm all pissed off i drive the car back to the pits and uh shut it off and water starts pouring out the side of the damn thing and uh I'm like, man, that was that. That was actually water under my tires. That was no clutch. So we're all, you know, kind of bummed. And Casey looks at the log. He's like, dude, you put you put too much power in it. And he's like, you blew this. You know, of course, the head gas you blew out of it. So I was a little. We were all really down. And I mean, I haven't felt that shitty in a long time. If you watch the video, I'm I'm pretty pretty bummed. And getting ready to put the car back in the trailer. I look at Casey and I go, dude, what if we just run this thing with no water? I was like, have you ever tried that before? And he's like. Screw it. We might as well try. And, and uh, look at Trevor from Texas Peak. He's there too. And he's like, I don't care. He's like, melt the damn thing down. And he's like, do what you got to do. So we uh, we drain the water. I go out and I, I miss a gear. Like I got the I got the engine on its last leg and I miss a damn gear. So I'm, you know, oh. like, God damn. I'm like, Garrett, you got to get your shit together. So we go out again and it spins the tires on the line. I go 810 and I'm, dude, I'm, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Or I went at 807. I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, this this just sucks. So last past night, five minutes left in the rental. Um, pull up. I try and launch the car. It, it doesn't leave. It bogs. It shuts, and so I just speed it off. They push me back. The car is already hot. You know, they they all look at me. They're like, this is it. This is your last shot right here. And, and uh, dude, it just, just fucking left. Five, ten to the eighth. Like, no, are you kidding me? And I knew it was a pass. And when I got up to the big end, top of fourth gear, you know, when you feel your car nose over and you know something's wrong, like it nose over so hard and just went through the draft, thinking 
funky noises and you know so we we ended up going 782 with two blown heads yes it's on 11 pounds of oil pressure and that was that so <laughs> that was that so dude like the 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 draining of the water thing i know like there's probably been a bunch of flack given to you but i'm just gonna go on a limb and say that i completely respect that level that approach the the willingness to just melt it down to go for it dude that's yeah it was so i watched the video not. and i was like when you were like train the water out of it i stood up i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> It was doing yeah. I was like so glad I didn't think of that on the drive home. And you know, those Athena head gaskets have that firing in them. Yeah. So when you lift the head, because I've got stock head studs, you know, they're they're just the stock size. They're ARPs. They're not even the 2000s. And uh, when it lifts the head, it pushes the water out, but it clamps back down on the ring. So even like when we had to do the head gaskets on Sunday or Monday morning, we could see where the ring had reset over a little bit and cut in again because they've got those Athena firing. Mm -hmm. So that was our saving grace. The fact that the head clamped back down on the ring, you know, water was obviously not an option, but we had compression because of the ring. So that just went out there and sent it on everything we had and <laughs> did what we had to do, yeah. And, so, you know, the engine's fine, I think. I think it's fine. So prior to lifting the heads on the thing and pushing the gasket out of it, like what other, what other like hurdles have you had to overcome? Cause there's gotta be a lot. It, it's impressive to me. I think that in a couple of years span, you've gone from what is basically a stock C5 to running sevens with very minimal experience yeah. and not being a professional level team. Like that's not a knock yeah. against you. That's, that's a, that's a huge props. Uh, and uh, yeah. what a hurdle is like, it's not easy. So what do you do? Like, what's your strategy launching this car? Okay. The biggest hurdles are, are for sure. The, uh, the transmission, like once I started working the tranny hard, you know, once I did the eight forty eight and got the transmission cooking, um, it started having problems shifting and that was hard for me because I make, you know, I got to make these videos for a living and I got to go out and, and do my absolute best. And when every pass I'm missing a year, it, it's frustrating for me and, and my viewers, they're like, why am I watching this shit? He can't even change the gear. You know what I mean? Right. And so switching to the, the, the face plate, that changed everything. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a bad transmission. That, that thing, that thing's going to shift if you do it right. But sometimes, you know, when you have, if you spin the tires, it, it doesn't like shift. Or if you got it in your head that you're, you know, you're nervous, it's not going to shift. It's like, so that was, that was a lot of it, it was getting comfortable and you know when a car leaves out the hole for a six shift car you know I, and i'm sure jared can can vouch for this too man you have no time to think when it when it leaves real hard and it's going low five to the eight it's like you gotta be on your, your a game so getting comfortable with that was a big thing suspension was was hard because you know not having any any experience with drag racing i didn't know what i was doing so I basically set the Vikings up on the stock, you know, what they suggest for the uh, the launching. And it went 118 to the 60 foot at TX2K, but that track is so good that you can't really, like, I just couldn't expect that at, at most other tracks. Right. And so when we got down in the 8th and it was evident that we had a 7 on our hands, but the hurdle was definitely getting the car to leave. And I think Casey played a big part in that when he came in and, I'd never felt the front of the car lift up like it did. You know, I had the whole thing just too tight and the front end lifted up. Like I felt like I was doing a wheelie, but it left all in, all in one motion. And a lot of what I've always been worried about is the 60 foot. But now I, I realize that the 60 foot matters, but it's the 330 that is so crucial to the whole path. I mean, if you don't get your stick car to 330, it just, because, I mean, I can roll out on the top of the tire and get a good 60 foot, and but it'll spin the top of first, you know. And then the whole pass is, is wiped. If you watch the 807 pass, that's what happened. Is I, I still went 1-2 to the 60 foot, but it went 810. Same exact tune-up. I 330 did hard and went 782. It's like that was the big step was not focusing so much on the 60 and just getting the car to leave all the way. And, yeah, Casey from uh, – any white guy SWZ performance, he played a, a big part in that for sure. Nice. So what's uh how many parts have you broken like 
on this thing since the beginning? Like, what has uh, stopped you? I mean, believe it or not. Okay, so I went through the twin disc. I went through my monster twin disc, and uh, that's uh, that's it for the clutch. The triple's been in there the whole time. I had stock axles in the car up until March. Never broke a stock axle. And then I put the outlaw axles in from G-Force. The only part I have ever broken, ever racing that car, is when I was at I-29 Dragway for the ice cream cruise. This is like my fourth pass ever with the turbos. And they were doing a no prep. I don't, you know that track in Nebraska? They do like a little eight mile no prep. Stuff. It's actually and, uh, it's across the river the, in Iowa, and I live. I'm literally sitting about 15 minutes yeah, from yeah, it right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's so the Omaha the track though. Race with, yep. with pimp juice, and I I knew what pimp juice was, you know, because I had done some cash days with 1320. But we were, like I said, we have no idea what we're doing. This is a year ago, and my buddy, also not experienced in drag racing. He's like, you want to do a burnout in the pimp juice? There's some extra pimp juice right here. I go, sure. So he pulled me into it, not knowing this is dried pimp juice. You know how it looks wet? Yeah. So yeah. I revved <laughs> this bitch. I'm like, oh, mom. Dump the clutch. Just pops the output out. The output shaft right off the back of the damn thing. I call Jeremy Jones. I'm like, dude, you're not going to believe what I just did. That, that's the only part I've ever broken, though. No, nothing else is ever broken. That, that I can think of off the top of my head, you know, I've I've put some synchros out of transmissions and, and stuff like that, but it, I've never ever not been able to drive my car into the trailer at the end of the day. I may have missed it. How much does it weigh? Twenty nine hundred me in it. That's still pretty heavy for a race car. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing that I catch so much flack about, and and here's the deal with the body panels thing is people can can bitch and moan all they want. You know, it only promotes my brand when they do it. But at the end of the day, if Jared Kokenauer validates my past, then that's all that matters to me. You know what I mean? Because if he's saying this car counts for what we're doing, you know, and he's the one that's on top at the moment, then then who else does it matter to? So it's like the body (laughs) panel thing, you guys, everyone's more than welcome to complain about it. But at the end of the day, if, if... people who are on top understand what it is then that's that's what matters and yeah. the uh the body panel thing is like you take fiberglass off and you add an exoskeleton a water tank two turbos you know all sorts of crazy shit it it doesn't really lose you that much weight i, I would say you a and drop the coefficient of drag you know <laughs> yeah. a little by bit. double yeah 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 I mean, I would say regardless of the weight savings or no weight savings, coefficient drag, any of the above, like 99% of the people who are knocking your accomplishments or trying to take a stab at it are, you know, they've probably never been out of the 12s. So I would take it all with a grain of salt. But it's <laughs> the the mayhem that has ensued and the memes that have come out in just, you know, a short, what, 48 hours it's been have been... Uh, it's pretty hilarious to to watch everybody kind of their heads explode on this whole deal. Um, but regardless, at the end of the day, you can't take anything away from somebody who's rowing their own gears to a seven second pass. That's impressive. I don't care who you are. Oh, yeah. you do have a listener wondering if you're going to drag week. Yeah, I, that's, that's what I try and, you know, promote is the fact that I feel like I'm hurting myself sometimes with the no bodies. But some people, yeah, simply they just don't get it. We do have a listener wondering if you're going to drag week. Um, so we're on, I don't know. That's, that's a hard one because I really want to do the LS Fest six shift class. And if I leave, you know, drag week starts Sunday of LS Fest and that's the same day as elimination. So depending on how the car runs, if it's running good, I'm going to stay do the six shift class. If it's something happens and I'm going to drag week. Yeah. Why do they do that? My, that's, uh, that's two years now. They need to. Somebody needs to reschedule this. <laughs> They've been doing it. It's actually long. Years. It's actually longer than that. And yeah, it's just kind of a, a sad complication. This is getting right. It's getting excessive. It's a little frustrating for sure. I think like everybody's just but, playing Harper ball at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm I'm super excited to see what Jared can do. You know, I think he's once that car is sixty foot. I mean, it's. That car is going deep into the seven. It's that thing is just, it's absolutely no joke to do 189 miles an hour in a quarter mile. Oh, yeah, years. I mean, dude, 
that that's just mind boggling. He's he's more than what is that? I don't know, ten, fifteen miles an hour ahead of me. I mean, that's just nuts. Like that thing is making so much power. It's it's awesome to see. So I'm I'm really excited to see him run a seven and see how far he pushes me because you know the whatever he does, I'm gonna have to come back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, it's it, it's it's really right. Go ahead, James. Here and here, go for it. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the game. And shoot, I'm right in there with you. I ain't as fast as y'all yet, but I'm trying. So that's James oh, yeah. Short, by the way. In, in case I didn't know, you guys yeah, haven't yeah, met yet or not. Yeah. But yeah, he's was working yeah. with Jared. I think tonight, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So if you guys that are listening Charlie. can't can't pick up on this, we got you know the the, the guy who currently holds the record. And then the guy who's part of the camp that is trying to take the record from them. They're both on the same show here. Both camps are pushing each other, applauding each other, regardless yeah. of how much you want to question le- the legitimacy of Leroy's holding the record. It's kind of irrelevant, but because the kind of competition like this between two different camps just breeds yeah. success on both sides and it pushes the envelope and there's a trickle down effect and, it's just it's good for the sport. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the cars yeah. are so different that it's just it's awesome. They have two different EFI systems. They one's blower, one turbo. One's got body panels. One doesn't. <laughs> Everything's right. different, and it's it makes it so much cooler. You know, like when Jared went a fifteen, I was like, damn, like I got to get out there, man. That's the only thing that you know I've been one to sevens, but he's pushed me harder than anybody else. I'll tell you that much. It's the building block effect. One guy goes, hey, I just went faster. Your turn. Next guy goes, hey, I just went faster. Your turn again. It's, yeah, it's great. It's pretty awesome. That so, kind of record setting is, is what does make for epic things. And for those of you who might have tuned in late, you need to go back and listen to the description of the seven-second pass because it was Hemingway-esque. Right. Everybody might not appreciate <laughs> what that means, but it was Hemingway-esque replay this episode listen to that description because you are hearing lots of video. history and art <laughs> and watch the video at the same time it's that great uh, yeah dude the video is awesome I, it keeps you on your edge of your seat if you guys haven't watched it over day. Movie. yeah it's perfect it's awesome <laughs> hey logan minutes. logan wants to know if he can get that idler back <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I'll send it out. I, you know, I after Charlotte, I PayPal'd him like forty bucks or something. I was like, thank you so much for the idler. <laughs> he, he definitely. I mean, that's that's right there is sportsmanship. I mean, he's on Jared's camp too. You know, being that it's, it's BTR and and Logan without question said, you know, if you need this idler to keep racing, so be uh, and take it. You know, af- and mind you, after you kicked his ass, let's just put that out there too. He did yeah. lose. <laughs> Logan lost that race. You, you just need to get Logan yeah. on here. He needs to be on here anyway. But uh, carry on. I'm trying oh, to get no. Jared on right now. Yeah, oh, get Jared God. on. That would be sweet. No. You can conference Jared, him. Okay. Logan. He's trying to get the password typed in right now, so he'll be on any minute. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, cool. hey uh, Garrett, can you do me a favor? We've got one of our good yeah. friends listening. His name's Dan Parker. And he can't see yeah. the photos of your car. Can you describe why you have a 0.6 uh, uh, coefficient, of drag. coefficient of drag versus the stock CO6 at 0.29? Okay. So uh, imagine did- a, a Corvette. Now imagine it naked. <laughs> now, now imagine it with two giant turbos, you know, right in front of the windshield. And a, a giant old exo cage wrapped around the thing. The cage is outside of what's left of the chassis of the car. It's an it's it's as close to an eight fifty cage as we could make it, but it's on the outside of the car. It's like a Mad Max looking Corvette breathing bald eagle. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's kind of oh, I'm just, all of all of the bald eagles. I think I mean, Mad yeah, Max is a good description that he probably referenced Mad pretty well. Max is a good way to put it, man. I can see this thing cruising across the, the desert here and, you know, after the <laughs> nuclear whatever holocaust, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would fit one right thing in. That Dan oh, yeah. might, one thing that Dan might pick up on too is all the wheels are out in the air, and that is so bad for Arrow. Yeah. Like, oh, terrible for Arrow. So bad, man. Yeah. If I could just Yeah, and you don't even have skinnies on, on the front. Hand. You don't even have skinnies on the no, front. You got regular old tires. 
No, he's got skinny dogs. No, he does have skinny. Yeah. Oh, there was a picture that just flashed by, but that must be an older one. Yeah, it, it does have skinnies. But if I could describe to you guys the feeling of the air on the big end, I mean, it, it's 100%. You can feel it. It's it's almost like your car is spinning. You know, I mean, the only way I could think of how you feel it is if you say you went two, 250 miles an hour and you can feel the air pushing back on you and you can feel the tires trying to come out around the car. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like it's pushing. You can just feel it just pushing its life away. It's, it's definitely uh, it's a weird. It's a situation. struggle. Yeah. When you ran the half mile, how fast did the car go? So when I did the half mile, I was doing a thing for uh, Michelin tire. So I had Pilot Sport Cup twos, and I wasn't allowed to run anything else. So I think I went 169 miles an hour, like four times, just because I was so tire limited. I mean, it was it was brutal. I was spinning at 50. Yeah. But it was uh, fun. So. What's next? What, what you know, if 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 Jared knocks the record out, are you gonna go to try and take it back from him or are you gonna try and set the bar even lower absolutely, regardless yeah. of the fact or yeah, I mean absolutely. There's there's no plan to stop right now, you know, we're I'm not gonna try and rush back out. I'm gonna put a motor with half inch head sets in my car and then uh we'll go to LS best just kind of play around. I'm not just gonna go up and put the car on kill and try and you know, go stupid fast just because I'm going to end up hurt head gaskets probably. You know, I got horrible heads, so. so. Are you going to put water back in it? <laughs> yes. I, yes, I do plan on putting water back. If, if someone else wants to talk for me, oh, there we go. They're, they're like fireworks off. I'm at the boardwalk in New Jersey and they're doing a fireworks show. So if someone else wants to talk for me, I'll mute yeah. my phone. Have they considered dry decking the motor while they while you're going through it? What you you mean like sealing the the water jacket? There's there's no water in the head gasket. The the block is sealed off. The head is completely sealed off. And oh then you've got, yeah, you've no, got no, water no. lines, external water lines that connect the block and the head. Oh no, I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. You know that's that's the next trick. If stuff. you have trouble keeping them sealed up, that that would be the next move. Okay. I, I, uh, one of our one of our listeners wants to know if what if you ran alcohol instead of water in the cooling system? Yeah, have you thought about running yeah. methanol, straight methanol? I didn't. I see, guys, you're talking about stuff that like I don't I don't even know about. No, know? it's all right. It's stuff. all right, man. This is stuff you want to think about later. This is our nerd level of shit right here. But so. Dude, this is why it's this is why this is so impressive to me. Like, I'm not I know. trying to take anything away. Like, no, it's his the, learning the curve. You're literally witnessing deck. this guy's learning curve, and it's yeah. literally just effort and the will to live that gets this guy where yeah. he's at, which yeah. is fucking yeah. awesome. Sorry, pardon my French. That's yeah, yeah love and this. Although Huge I, props, I haven't read yeah, for the that story long. is good. I, uh, you know, I have. And although I haven't raced as long as you know some of these guys, I have so much time in my car because I race every weekend. Like yeah, I, I am always racing. I race, I race on the weekdays. I race on the weekends. It's it's my job to go out and race and create content. So I have so much time over the last year that that's where I was, you know, thankfully able to learn my car and and you know figure out how to use the clutch that you know the triple disc correctly and make it all come together it's it's so. a killer story dude your your learning curve has been accelerated exponentially compared to what most have and dude you're you're living the dream <laughs> uh, we're trying that's for sure doing our best um what jared is the plan with, yeah what's the... Jared, jared's on now too oh cool cool is he gonna talk or is he gonna mute himself here yeah, i think he's, I, I I think he's waiting for an opportunity guy. I personally would stay with the 11 millimeter head studs. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, they'll just keep trucking on, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I can see why you'd want me to do that. <laughs> I can see why you'd want me to do that. I think my new line is going to be when people are talking shit, I'm going to say, don't make me drain the water out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Instant classic. All right. <laughs> I already pulled the bodies off. The body off. Don't make me drain the water. <laughs> Man, so, it's funny. We were at uh, we were in South South Carolina, House of Cook, and uh, I actually asked James, your 
So oh, for, I mean, to think about how hot the oil got in the car, it only made 11 pounds of oil pressure because, you know, I had messed up so many passes. I messed up three passes before I was able to get the one. So, like, I just kept heating the damn thing. We just didn't have enough time to cool it off before we went back up. But I'd love right. to know. I, I can't wait to get it apart and see if there's anything really gnarly done to it. But I don't know. It ran fine when I put it in the trailer. So. Right. As long as you had proper flow, the 11 pounds isn't such a big deal. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've forgotten to put, you know, I usually have to run it a quart over because I got the C6 pan. And I've forgot many a times to do that. And I've, you know, evacuated the pan. Jerry and I used to talk all the time about pans. I was hitting him up asking about his because I had the C5 on and I would just suffocate that thing of oil and finally got it figured out. Luckily, it's stuck with me through all that <laughs> so but that was definitely the lowest i've ever seen so before we get too deep into this we got listeners on here um listening we got jared kokenauer who is the second well i guess he's the second quickest but now the fastest i don't know how we're gonna break these yeah, records up yeah. right <laughs> uh but jared you've been at the track with uh, mr short all day today flogging your car trying to reset the bar here how did that go for you uh, man, it's tough, you know, we're honestly fighting a clutch that just, it's just unforgiving. You know, we're trying to flip it, we're trying everything to get a good 60 foot out of the car, and it's just not coming together, so I don't know what we're going to do going forward, but it's not working, you know. So, back in the spring, first pass out of the gate, the car went up 128, 60 foot, 539, at 142 or something, first pass ever, but it was blown through the clutch. So, you know, we knew we had to back up and punt. Now we got to clutch the whole power, but it's just very unforgiving on the launch. So, your best pass today, I'm looking at Facebook here, 803 at 189.31, right? Right. Man, hot on the heels. I can't wait to see how this all like, shapes up. Yeah, 8003, sorry. God. Yeah. Yeah, that really <laughs> that's hard man. That's God, hard. just a tailwind oh, away, away, man. Away. That's a tailwind. That's a five Dude. mile an hour tailwind. <laughs> fart away. Hey, how's that uh how's that <laughs> handbrake doing oh. for you, Jared? The the trans brake? Uh, what? It's okay, man. I can't get a full grasp of it. Obviously you've got a lot more seat time than I have, with yeah. it, but I definitely feel like it helps slow the drive train and keep things together, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing that was totally not planned on our camp is I put a drift brake in it because I wanted to go drifting with my, my buddies. And I started <laughs> using it to change. And we realized if you preload everything in the drivetrain by just rubbing the clutch on it a hair and you're sitting there on the two-step, I mean, my stock axles never broke. I went 118 on them. Yeah, we always like that when we watch the video. It seems like you're about 20, 30 feet out and you kind of gradually release the brake. No, yeah. I drop it all at once, so it's, it's sitting there and it's I'm on the two step. The clutch I can feel it grabbing a little bit, and once I want to leave, it's, I have it gripped really hard. So I just I just let it all go at once. Hey Garrett, it's Chad Reynolds at Bang Shift. How you doing, dude? Chad, the man. Yeah. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Hey, dude, um, much, no, you, you bring up a really good point with the handbrake. I'm glad you said that because I know you've been doing that for a long time. The truth of the matter is, like, current cars that are trans brake equipped, um, they they never get to do anything like this. But if you look at a uh, NHRA Pro Stock car, right. when you stage those cars, you pull in and light the top bulb and you put a certain amount of brake pressure. It depends on the car and the driver, yep. but it's doing the exact same thing. Of brake pressure. Yep. Yeah, um, they have a gauge. When you, when you pre-stage it and then you drag the clutch to light the second bulb. And so, like you said, all of the drivetrain is loaded. 
And that's how they've gotten away with running all of this ultra lightweight stuff in these pro stock cars for all this time, making all this crazy. It's actually real soft on the powertrain to leave that. They literally have a brake pressure gauge in there to (laughs) they nail the same pressure. Oh yeah, that's all. Our our car has that. We log it on the Holly. Way softer on parts. Yeah, the brake pressure gauge is like a critical deal when you're staging the car. Some teams have a light um, where the light you know, flickers um, when it's the right pressure, actually two lights. And so they know if just one's lit, that's right. And if they go, you know, a little too much, the second light, it's too much. And then they just set the line lock button. But, um, but yeah, it, it, they've been doing that for decades, literally. So um, wow. you may have found it out by accident, but dude, it saved a lot of your shit. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Certainly. Yeah, just a little bit of the brake and then the line lock to hold it at that pressure helps drastically on yeah. a stick shift car with launching. Dude, it's it's funny you say that because my car, uh, you know, I bought the cars of probably a 450, 500 horsepower chassis, you know, with a little cam only LS6 in it that went like, you know, went crazy fast. It went like 960s. But uh, yeah. whenever I got the race back turned on in the car, I noticed the brake pressure. You know, and I'm like, you know, I, I've never done this. You know, I'm still learning too, and I'm like, "What the heck is he got brake pressure here for?" You know, uh, you know obviously, over time, I've learned. You know, like exactly what you said, the pro stock dudes are doing it. Apparently, that's what he was doing as well. But he was having issues with the line lock not releasing fast enough, kind of, I guess, hurting his, you know, reaction time. Interesting. Oh, reaction Crazy times game. are irrelevant when you're Got going. Got the wrong line lock if it's that slow. Right. It's nuts, man, because the clutch, there's so many variables right now. Because, you know, nor, neither Joe nor I have a strain gauge. We don't have clutch valves. You know, we got right. nothing. So it's every pass is, you know, a lot of times so different. And it's, it's not only frustrating, but it's, it's awesome at the same time because it's just gnarly. It's raw, you know. It is what it is. Yeah, but you know what makes that cool is that back in the day when Pro Stock, for example, first started or back when stick shift drag racing was the thing, um, those guys were in the same boat, right? They didn't have all the data. They didn't have the ways to repeat the, you know, the way that the clutch was going to behave every single time. And they did it by feel, which is honestly the real reason for dry hops back in the day and drag racing was so that the driver could practice the launch and feel what it was going to do, uh, you know, when they left the line that time. And so I they would go out there and they would true. do that with the rosin and, and all that stuff until they were ready to go. And I mean, back in the day, you know, we think that the street outlaws made, you know, double burnouts and stuff. And those guys are just a bunch of tools. They didn't do any of that crap compared to the guys in the, in the old days that did all that shit 40 years ago, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah, I I love the dry hop guy. <laughs> Me too. <Yeah. laughs> Scott Sublet was he a dry hop guy? He's been doing it so long. He probably was a dry hop guy. Yeah, it's usually like an open header uh, seventy four Nova that runs like run eight. He's in the eight. Yeah, in the eight. <laughs> I met a stripper no. who did that one time. <laughs> yeah, and then you got Logan. Awesome. You got Logan telling the dry hump guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's a different <laughs> show, though. <laughs> so I want to know, just uh, for my own curiosity, what are you doing with the Dale truck? Because I'm so jealous of that thing. So Texas Speed built a uh, 427 for it. We put a CID intake on it, and I was just in Texas on a uh, last Friday to dyno it on their engine dyno with a Holly, and it made like. 690 NA just with some base tuning and then we had to leave so it's it's just a nice ripper NA setup so we're gonna throw it in there take the LS fest what's this going in I'm I'm not familiar with this one what's it going in he's got a former go Uh, ahead you tell him dude you tell him it's a it's a Dale Earnhardt uh, NASCAR truck like from the truck series yeah got a full Dale Earnhardt paint scheme on it and it's got a VIN number and so it's got uh, LS1 in it right now. We drive it on the street. We drag race it. And just I mean, you get pulled stuff. over on the street in it. Yeah, you get pulled over in it. And, you know, that's one of my videos. Just pretty much anything we can think of to do with it, you know. It's, 
doing it for Dale, so you just gotta let it rip. How oh, cool! It's, it's the sickest. It's straight up circle track. It's the now when you get ever. pulled over, is it yeah. for auto? Is it for autographs, or do you live in a area where the cops where the cops are just well? I can't say that. You know the cop. The cop that pulled me over was like, "Where's your license plate?" You know, I was like, "Oh, it's right here." He's like, "Well, what about your blinkers?" I'm like, "They're right here." And then he's like, "Oh, well, these are slick." He's like, "You can't have slick tires on the street." I was like, "All right, dude." <laughs> yeah. what do you want from me i'm like i'll just finally I'll got go me home right now like, <laughs> i was like you got me you know what I mean? so, <laughs> we got pulled over for typical that, hater actually, yeah i just i'm gonna put some drag radials on it and this might sound very racer like but i'm gonna have to put good ear back on the tires i'm gonna paint it on or i don't know i'm gonna figure it out because it yeah, so yeah. that's awesome they have those way cool sticker tire things now you can put on to call your tires any brand you want. So they're available uh, for, boys for only eight ninety five. And I uh, go. A little you need trick. to name them like you need to make them Dale years or something. Right? <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if you take a dual action sander, you can buff off any of the lettering on the sidewall of a tire. Um, you can oh, do yeah, put, true. To put Goodyear on the side or to conceal the true tire size of your tire for whatever class you're running in. When the, or if yeah. you're just trying to get rid of the white on the MT so that the cops don't pay attention to that, I'm with you. If any, if any of my little acetone that removes that white, no problem. Yeah. If anybody's That's local, true. anybody local is listening to this, I definitely did not do that to my tires. <laughs> yeah, whatever you lying back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well uh that's pretty much all i got i mean it was uh the, the biggest fight of my life for sure and, um i'm so like i said i'm so pumped to see jerry getting a seven two i'll be standing there welcoming you in and i'm curious to see how deep that sucker is gonna rip into the sevens when it's 60 foot i'm a little concerned as a matter of fact <laughs> it's, so, it's gonna go fast I mean, if he gets that 60 fixed Hey Jerry, did I you know, get that? Man. Jerry, did you get that email from me this afternoon? Hi, John. I just liked your post on Facebook. Oh, oh thanks, buddy. <laughs> I didn't have my check. I didn't have to check my email. I was going 190 through the quarter. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the great. That's the greatest response ever. Um, <laughs> Dude, that mile an hour is crazy. crazy. Yeah, new trap <laughs> speed. Who's this? I just want to go 180. Once I go 180s, I'll be happy. No, you won't. Be pushing 190. Yeah, well, I'll do heroin one more yeah. time, and that'll be it. Then it'll be 200 <laughs> and 210, 225. Yeah. Right. What are you spinning that sucker to, Jared? I mean, when you went through the traps, you had to be well over 80 grand. 85, 8600. God dang, man, that is just insane. All due to those stock rocker art. She's just yeah. getting started. At, she's just getting started at eighty five hundred. Party's just wow, getting started. Man. I can't wait till we yeah, spray. Blower loves spinning. Oh yeah, dude. That thing does. I mean, dude, spray. Well, How we, fast is it gonna go? I don't know. We were afraid to turn the blower up. It's making around forty pounds at eighty to eighty five hundred somewhere in there, and we're afraid to spin it much faster. And but we kind of seen it clean off at around forty pounds at that. RPM. So now I'm thinking we should speed it up and see if it actually, if it cleans off of 40 pounds, I'm good. With it. I just don't want to make 45 or more. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You have to put that 342 gear back in it. Right. <laughs> yeah. will probably be in the damn 750s by then. <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's pretty cool, though. I mean, that's that's just the raw power to do on 89 like that. Man, that's awesome. Well, we should probably let Garrett get out of here, man. I told him it'd only be 15 or 20 minutes. Here we are an hour later dragging this guy's time. He's probably got <laughs> no, no, to you're be. good, guys. I, I really enjoyed talking to you. Now, I, I was hoping, I, uh, I was glad you came on, man, because I know you're probably used to, you know, interviews on Good Morning America and stuff like that, but uh, we, uh, <laughs> we're, pretty, we're pretty laid back here, and our guys are genuinely interested in exactly what you had to say. I mean, it, it, we'd rather hear the story of how you got where you got there, and, it, and it's kind of cool because... Your success, everybody knows that obviously you're doing something right, which is cool. Um, it's neat. It was neat for me to hear that the car was a salvage car. It wasn't like I started off 
you know, with a nice car and tearing the body apart or whatever. Yeah. You did this because mm-hmm. it was budget oriented. You know what I mean? That's just, yep. uh, that's, that's it freaking was, awesome. Yeah. So good to see. Yeah, and, and the last thing it would definitely be like a lot of people have tried to hit me with, I have an unlimited budget to, to do what we did with this car. And it's like, man, what parts did we go through? Yeah. We had the motor in for a year. You know, we had some, we had nice axle, we had a nice transmission, but it's not like I have the most baller, you know, motor in it. I don't have the most baller, you know, carbon fiber panels. I don't have the craziest stuff you've ever seen. Yeah. It's and, not, uh, it's you don't have a hood. definitely made it work. Right. It's a relatively I didn't even have head combination. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The, don't, no. don't, don't make me drain the water out of this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. The car is impressive. Yeah, that's the line of the evening, but people really want to know what's it like to work with Kyle from thirteen uh, twenty. Well, what other Kyle could we be talking about? Oh, dude, you know, I'll say this about Kyle: he's the most generous person in the world. For someone with a a, a big YouTube channel to let one of their own employees basically hit the road and help him make his own YouTube channel. I mean, that, that right there is enough to tell you what type of person Kyle is. So, you know, if I'd be terrified if one of my guys said, Hey, I want to start my own channel, you know, Kyle, when I did it, he was like, how can we promote this? Let me post your links. Let me do this. You know, he's working with Kyle off. This is, it's amazing. So good guy. Outstanding. <clears throat> that is awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate your time. You guys are all real cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Garrett. Appreciate you for coming on, man. He's got to go through the video. The whole video on how he got here is awesome. Yeah, give us an explanation. I'll message you the link just to make sure you have it. I don't know if you have it. We can uh, post it up on our Facebook, It's a movie. If you guys got a minute, yeah, check it out. Uh, And and what do do they search on YouTube? Yeah, it's 45 minutes, but it's great. What do they search on YouTube to find it? Just Is it Cletus McFarland or is it Leroy? You can just type in Cletus McFarland or like, World's first GM in the seventh. I mean, that's the title of it. But if you type Cletus McFarlane, it'll be the first one. Yeah, or just type C L E, and and yeah. it automatically pulls up Cletus McFarlane <laughs> on YouTube. And if Google. you can't figure out how to spell all that through autocorrect, C-L- just Leroy yeah. Corvette, and you you'll go. Yeah, just, oh, Leroy no. Corvette would work. Too, you can yeah. type in the L E for right, Leroy so Corvette. Much, guys. Yeah. Later, man. All right. Thanks, if you dude. just open up your cell phone and you start to hit the letter C, it'll, yeah, it'll automatically up pop up because the CIA <laughs> is already using your phone this to guy listen to it. It dominates the search order on YouTube and Google right, right now. You're right. number one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks, dude. Here, Talk let to me you know later. You come out of there. <laughs> yeah, I need a driver. <laughs> Jared, you stick you around, right, man. We can talk to you a little bit more. We can. We got some time yet. So take care, Cletus. All right. So that was cool. That ended up being neat. Now, I don't know where I, I mean, we got, we got the guy who, um, the next guy. And I'm just curious to hear a little bit more about Jared's program, actually, since we got him on here, if we got time, I got time for sure. That car is crazy, crazy. Tell everybody, Jared, tell us about the blower setup on this thing. Yeah. What's your combo for going this fast? (laughs) It's ridiculous. So, we started the year off with a normal F1X, you know, belt drive deal, streetcar stuff. Actually, the blower had like 10,000 miles on it. came off of my C60 that I drove on the street a lot. And uh, we honestly bought belt issues for the first six months of the year. Otherwise, we have, honestly, I feel like we'd already been in the 790s, you know. And uh, so we, we finally give up the ghost there. And Pro Charger talks into doing a direct drive and they talked us into doing an F1X-12, not because of the power, but because of the gearbox. You know, you use F3 gearbox, a lot tougher unit. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, it's been tough as nails. We haven't had the first lower problem in running this lower. Um, you know, it's 427 hydraulic roller, uh, EFS 2.5 heads. Uh, Q16, of course, James Shorts tuning in, Caltech ECU, car's about 3,000 pounds to be in it. Um, I don't know what else you guys have done. That's a pretty simple What's combo, it? too. What do you see? Yeah, like, Haltech? Aim, let's do it. Did you say he was running Haltech? Yes. Nice. Okay. Yeah, Haltech 2500. Yep. Good, good. And it's on Q16 fuel? Yes. Yep. 
Dude, if cool. you'd have put that fuel tech on there, there's your extra three thousandths right there. Just oh, kidding. Oh, damn. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I've that's the, been reading those posts all weekend. God. Getting deep up in here. Yeah. <sighs> hey Jared, have you thought about draining the water out of it and reducing the weight? <laughs> okay, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> If you switch back to a carburetor, Mark can help you. Yeah. So <laughs> what's, uh, what have been your trials and tribulations? What have you seen has been the stoppages and roadblocks in your program? Man, I mean, the blower's been the main thing, you know? I mean, first time out with the car, we went a killer 60 foot, but then we blew through the clutch in third gear. And, you know, since then, we put a centered iron deal in it. It's just, like I said earlier, so unforgiving. That's been the main thing. Um, holds power like like crazy, you know, but too much. So we're gonna have to back up and punt there and try to get after that sixty foot. Do you already have some sort of a plan in place to how to attack that? Uh, what what changes do you plan on making? Um, I mean, I'm I'm probably going to either try one of the uh, you know clutch tamers or, or swap out the clutch. I mean, something's got to change because I've tried every band's control to, to launch this car with RPM, handbrake, clutch release, and I've tried it all, you know. Mm. Have you thought about putting a little more gear back in it to take some of the hit away? Well, we literally just put this gear in today, like this morning. Did that, did that help you or hurt you? Um, well, it helped the car back half. Really puts in the meat of the power band after the eight mile and here, you know, and lets it rev out for its happy. But, um, you know, the 342 when it crosses the drive in fourth gear, it was just getting in, the, just getting in the meat of the power band, you know. What do you have suspension wise on that thing? So, I bought the car, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but. It's actually Rob Zona's old car. It was in GM High Tech back in like those six. Yeah. For being the first. You know, that's your name. Uh, oh. nice. He had uh, Spencer Afco all the way around the freeway adjustment. And honestly, I probably need to send them off and have them, you know, redone because they're probably you know, five years old at this point. Um, but they're working decent. Yeah. So it sounds like you got a somewhat of a solid game plan here. Um, when's the next time you're going to head out with this car? When can we be looking for some updates? I'm sorry, you guys broke up. Do I? When's the next time you're going to take the car back out and, and, and give this another shot? We know we've been out that you've been out there today, well, um, and I think everybody is. Just speed the blower up a little and uh either you know swap the clutch or try the same or something get this car down in the one two nine one two eight sixty foot area and i think it'll you know make a seven seventy pass it's got the mile an hour for 70s or even maybe in the high 60s doesn't it yeah and another thing we done we used to have the ram air scoop on car with the old blower which you know actually picked up four to five pounds of boost in third fourth year like clockwork i mean every every track we took it to it, it gained big time boost on the big end you know and we've left it off because we're kind of afraid to make too much you know we don't need 195 mile per hour to go seven now the gear of this game you know we may put it back on just to get all we can get Time to take a drink. Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of us that are not on Instabook all the time, can we dial back for a second and understand a little bit more about Jared's combination and what that is? Yeah. Um, so it's a uh, 03 Z06 Corvette. That's right around 3,000 pound race weight with me in it. Um, yeah, 427 hundred off crawler, face plated T56, um, you know, standard style diaphragm, but 
and we actually on the car this morning. Um, it's pretty straight. It's a 16 volt system. Apparently, it doesn't use an alternator. You know, we just race the car. We don't drive it on the street right now. The other details I can fill in. That's awesome. Did I hear T56? I mean, just like straight up T56, not a Magnum, not a whatever, all all new guts and glory or what? That's it is a, it is a, Right, it is a T4 gear set, T56, so it's technically not a stock gear set. So he's been pretty, he's been pretty fast uh, with the 6060 as well. Set. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And if I heard correctly, it sounds like both of you guys that are like just setting the world on fire with these combinations are running the same clutch in in general. Um, Maybe I misheard. Uh, not the same brand. Garrett and Ray Bulock and I don't know if several other guys are running the monster. Um, I'm actually using the fancy, which, which you know I like. Like I said, it's old and power, but it's just fair to launch. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody else got questions? Rise on a pee break, he says. That's why it gets quiet. <laughs> That's why it's quiet. Yeah, quiet. Or, um, no, so uh, that's interesting. Okay, so one blower combo, one turbo combo, both pretty basic transmissions. I mean, it's not like we're talking liberties here or something. Um, right, I, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, do you guys leave in second better. gear or do you, you go through? You leave in the higher gear, don't you? Or do first you? Gear. What first gear? gear. First gear. Okay, you leave in first. All yeah. right. <clears throat> Turbo is probably a lot softer on the launch. Yeah, yeah. You just have the capability of adjusting the boost level in first and second and third and fourth. Oh, sure. You know, boost whereas, by time is a, a handy advantage. You know, his advantage. is all RPM you know, dependent. So. Yeah. Well, you could totally add a blow-off valve that you use strictly to control boost to get the down low side to, to be able to make it easier to launch. Yeah, yeah. We're already talking about putting a boost solenoid on the bypass valve that yeah. way we can... Uh, yeah, I've done it on a few cars, and it, it helps when you have one that's really, really aggressive, and it, it makes it a little calmer, at least to get you out of the hole. It might be what you need to do at that point, just to. Well, we've been using we've been using timing to you know tame the thing down, but you know you can only pull so much timing on a on a setup making that kind of power before you start hurting parts and stuff yep. too. So, right. But the thing is, we're spinning the blower so slow. The car is at 6,500 before it even really comes into real power where the blower starts making steam, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it makes it like a light switch. So, like, he can bog it out of the hole because it doesn't make any power. And then, like, as soon as he rolls out another 10 feet, it, like, strikes the tires back off uh, just because it's so violently coming into power band. So, yeah. so the ideal thing would be to that's, speed the That's blower another reason to use one. Yep. Yeah, you can tame that down quite a bit. Right, right. Right, speed the blower up and then, you know, let it off up top, basically. What if you, uh, what about leaving in second gear? Will the transmission and the gear set take it? Yeah. I don't I know don't that really that clutch would slip enough it. to do it. No. I mean, it, with the 342, is going over 100 in second gear, which might not sound a lot. Powerglide guy, I guess. Uh, you know, plus guys. Yep. They still got well, more years to go after that. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just that thought. If you leave in second, then you know you could leave with at an at an RPM where the motor was making, you know, enough power to to power through it a little bit and try and uh, alleviate that bog issue. I think parts yeah, is another problem fun. with. Yeah, with the uh, Corvette parts too, they're a little bit on the fragile side. You know, that's why a lot of like Garrett, for instance, is preloading the drivetrain and uh, 
you know, trying to do a bunch of things to keep, you know, those parts together. Oh yeah. You'd have to, it'd have to, it's a fine line. You're dancing there trying to keep it alive and put the power down and through it. I found that this car more than any other car, there's a lot of TP in the one two shift. And yeah, that would definitely alleviate that, but I don't think you'd ever get the thing to me. Right on. All right, guys, we need to wrap it up. Anybody else got anything they want to share before we uh, close it out? Nah, son. What a good show, man. Jared, thanks for getting on. We're going to get you on with a better quality microphone when you sure. bust through that ver- barrier here in the next couple of weeks or whenever it is. And then uh, we'll get you guys back on here. But th- this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys, especially you last minute notice coming home from the track. If I understand it right, uh, we appreciate you getting on here, Jared. Right. That's badass. Yeah, I'm riding the dock, so that's probably why you can't hear me. No, it's okay, man. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, no, we'll have you back on. Appreciate it. And James Short helping yeah, out with the tune on that. Bewley helping out with the parts. Um, we'll be talking to you real soon, Jared. Yep. When you're busting that barrier. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. So uh, let's see what we got going on. I got a class. We just got one set up for December 1st and 2nd at Trick Pro Motorsports, and they're in Palm Bay, Florida. Definitely come check that one out. Um, other than that, we're going to add some new dates. We're going to do an advanced class sometime in late November I leave or possibly the second or third week in December at KSR at Kevin Smith's shop yeah, thanks for being on here tonight and talking to us a little bit Kevin we're going to have you back so keep the number <laughs> um, we want to have him back for sure and then uh, other than that we'll send everybody off we have a uh, good night you guys that are on the call stick around we'll talk for a few minutes we have our little uh, after hours nobody hang up send everybody off all right, all you listeners, thanks, man, for tuning in. Uh, we did set a new record tonight, obviously, because Cletus McFarland was on here, which is cool. Appreciate that guy coming on. I liked hearing his story. Thought that was cool. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's podcast. Everybody have a good week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.